This word Islamophobia that's flying around because of this war between Israel and the Hamas terrorist group, how come we've got this word for fear of Muslims, Islamophobia, but we don't have a word for fear of Buddhists or a fear of Hindus, a fear of Quakers? We have got a word for fear of Christians, Christophobia, but seriously, is that even a thing? No, it's a Islamophobia. That's the, that's the one. And the way it's being used, though, I think is dishonest because I think it's trying to blind us to something that most people, I think, actually know, even if it's not safe to say so. The very dishonest use of this word after the October 7 attack on Israel by Hamas, it's, I think it needs to be called out. We had 1,200 Jews there slaughtered, most of them civilians, many tortured or raped, brutally raped, some beheaded. But now, let me now show you the most dishonest or misleading use of the word Islamophobia. It's by US Vice President Kamala Harris. She and President Joe Biden saw this massacre and rape and beheading of Jews and thought, we've got to tackle Islamophobia. We've got to fight this fear of Muslims. I tell you, this is insane. And so today, I am proud to announce the Biden-Harris administration will develop our nation's first national strategy to counter Islamophobia. This strategy will be a comprehensive and detailed plan to protect Muslims and those perceived to be Muslim from hate, bigotry, and violence. Now, in Australia, like so many other Western countries, you've got much the same sort of messaging. Political leaders rushing out to say, we're not going to pick a side here, you know, anti-Semitism, Islamophobia, same thing. We're making a stand here about that. I move that the House condemns all forms of hate speech and violent extremist activity, including anti-Semitism and Islamophobia. Now, I have to say this is, this is bull, isn't it? In fact, evil or designed to blind us to a very unique danger from one religion. You see, anti-Semitism and Islamophobia, they aren't the same kind of thing at all. Islamophobia, and the word phobia is the clue. Islamophobia means you fear Muslims. I know it's been broadened to include other things, but essentially fear of Muslims, Islamophobia. Anti-Semitism means you hate Jews. You don't fear them, you just hate them. You're anti-Jews. Very different. I mean... Just ask yourself, did you ever think, uh, oh, I'm too scared to visit this country or that country uh, because of the Jews? I've got, what should we call it, Jew phobia. I'm too scared to go to this suburb or this protest because of the Jews. I mean, this protest, by the way, is of Muslims in Paris. You try to find something like that involving Jews in Paris. Can't find it. No, Islamophobia is right there out in the zone. The fear of Muslims. And if you are Jewish, particularly, you would probably understand that best. Although some attacks this week around the world, which I'll get to later, should tell you that Jews are simply in the front line. They're first, next come maybe the Christians, who knows? But Jews. And this fear really is something different. And it didn't, didn't come out of nowhere, you know. It just, oh, uh, I've decided to go and uh, be phobic about Islam. I mean, seriously didn't come out of nowhere. You take this October 7 attack. Now, apologists for what Hamas did that day to the Jews tried to tell us that uh, we've got to see it in context. See it in context. There's just another chapter in a long war. This led to that, led to this, led to that. Right? And this was nothing out of the ordinary. It's just what you get when you push people, the Palestinians, too far. Here, for instance, is the Secretary General of the United Nations proving again what a fool he is, but a sinister one. It is important to also recognize the attacks by Hamas did not happen in a vacuum. The Palestinian people have been subjected to 56 years of suffocating occupation. So that explains it, right? I mean, Essentially, if you go by that logic, the Jews helped provoke this massacre of themselves. You, know, you blame the Jews for what Hamas did to them. They were the cause, Hamas just the effect. Now, more than 300 Australian journalists, and I use that term loosely, journalists, 
air quotes, more than 300 Australian journalists made this line of argument very clear in an open letter to media outlets, setting out their demands in the most shameful document I've seen in Australian journalism. They demanded the media, when reporting this war that Hamas started, that the media provide historical context when referencing the October 7 Hamas attacks on Israel. They've got to say that the conflict did not start on October 7. So don't focus on October 7. Uh, don't see it as something very different. Don't say October 7 started the war. Boy, they'd like that, wouldn't they? They would like people to think that. And when people do say that, you know, October 7, and, uh, that's just what you expect in a war. It's just another chapter. I have to be honest, they, they disgust me. In fact, they scare me. Because here is what they're, they're saying. They understand what Hamas did. It's understandable. In fact, they can probably imagine themselves too being pushed doing something much like that if they were in the same position, God forbid. They like the protests we see in, yeah, in this case, say London, that uh, this is just an act of resistance. It was well, not an act of unforgivable evil. And they can then openly praise the Hamas attack while British police stand by like it was, oh yeah, fair enough. To me, they are not terrorists, they are freedom fighters. Now, some of these people I've got to hope are just deliberately, criminally stupid. They haven't really thought about it, right? And they're saying stupid stuff. God, I hope this is all it is. Because I cannot think, ask yourself, I cannot think of any circumstances at any time, even in a war, fighting for my homeland, even fighting for my life, that I would think it right to do what Hamas did on October 7. For instance, rape so many women as an act of war. How does that fit in? Now, I can't show you the evidence of what I'm talking about. It's just too confronting TV rules, all that kind of stuff. But eyewitnesses and medics have given the most graphic and horrific accounts of the rapes they saw by Hamas terrorists on October 7, when those terrorists went on a killing spree at a music festival. Women gang raped and then shot in the head, women shot in the genitals, women beheaded. And I ask you, can you really write that off as just another battle in a long war, you know, that people provoke too, too hard? That's what they, of course, would do. I mean, if that were the case, how come we don't hear of Israeli soldiers doing the same after what has been done to their countrymen? Don't hear of it. Can you imagine that you ever in any war, any war, thinking, well, it's just uh, an act of resistance to shoot one by one, to hunt down and shoot or throw a grenade into young women at a dance party, these young women at a dance party, to rape them and behead them and kill them. Yeah, yeah, that's just, you know, that's just war. Is that really what is meant by these people in the streets? Oh, well, Hamas is just fighting for freedom. Is there anything that Israel did first that explains this and excuses this? And I think when you ask that question and you answer, and you answer it honestly, you would have to say there's no context in which, in which you could say what Israel did licensed that. None. Because if you did that, that would be so evil and so monstrous, right? It's, it's not part of Western morality. It's not part of Christian taught morality, for instance. Nothing would make that normal and forgivable. And the context you need here is... If you really want context, I think you've got to look at Islam. Now, Hamas, in its chartered document, actually quotes the Quran and the sacred Hadith, saying it's actually a moral duty to kill Jews. Just kill them. Even passages saying, take women as sex as slaves if you caught them in combat. For instance, it says, it's until the Jews hide behind rocks and trees, which will cry, O Muslim! There is a Jew hiding behind me. Come and kill him. 
That's what it says. That's in the Hamas document, quoting sacred texts of Islam, which may help to explain why one Hamas terrorist on October 7 rang his parents boasting of something that we in the West, I hope, would consider an act of shame and depravity and want to hide from the gaze of the world. But this guy rang his parents and boasted. And I think the fact that this is this kind of treatment of Jews is somehow licensed in the sacred texts explains why Muslims as far away as Sydney celebrated the slaughter of the Jews with fireworks and why a Sydney imam, an imam, actually hailed this day of horror and evil as actually a day of pride while his supporters praised Allah. I think, would Christian priests celebrate the rape and murder of women and children? Do rabbis today in Israel celebrate, actually celebrate the deaths of the human shield, children and women? The Palestinians that Hamas uses to protect its terrorist infrastructure in this war that it started. Islamophobia, fear of Islam. I think we sort of know where that comes from that something so horrendous can be done. And we see Muslims, some, a lot don't, I know, but Muslims celebrating it or staying largely moot, in fact. In Australia, not one Muslim organisation has condemned that October 7 attack. Not a single one. And that, I think, is a silence that says something very loudly. And this fear of Islam, Islamophobia, this unique word, Islamophobia, it's not just felt by Israelis, and it's not some mystery. It's not something, you know, that Israelis somehow cause themselves. And it's not something that Kamala Harris will eliminate with a fine speech or some glossy pamphlets. Because you have a look at just the last week. In France, yet another Islamist attack in Paris. A tourist murdered. Or in the Philippines, three Catholics killed on Sunday when an Islamist threw a grenade into their mass. Or in Germany, four more Islamists arrested there over three planned terror attacks, allegedly. Three in just one week, including on a Christmas market. I don't know, have there been Jewish plots against Christmas markets? Have there been Jews in Paris stabbing tourists? Tossing grenades into cathedrals? I think this, that's the difference, isn't it? Anti-Semitism is what makes Jews feel they'll be attacked for being Jews. Islamophobia is for many the fear of being attacked by Muslims for being Jews, or Christians, or Hindus, whatever. And to link the two, as so many leaders are doing today, is just a smokescreen to blind the rest of us to what the Jews truly suffered on October 7. And why, yes, yes, this war did start on that day why it involves us all.